So I'm about to give you guys a technical tour of this new house. Um, there's some several aspects about this house that are very unique that I haven't seen in other builds. So, so here's one of the uh, technical aspects of this house. A lot of people ask me why do they have the, the foundation set up so high. Um, in Japan, the standard is 300 millimeters. So this one's about 290 uh, roughly. So they'll pour this concrete slab and they do it on purpose because this space inside the concrete area right here is a crawl space so that anybody that has to do any kind of utility maintenance, whether it's sewage, plumbing, uh, electrical work, they can actually crawl through the underground area and there's gaps between the concrete slab where you can actually crawl in between each one of the spaces. Uh, so this is by design, 300 millimeters is the standard average in Japan. And on top of that, they'll elevate this foundation up off of the concrete slab because concrete does absorb water and moisture. And they'll put what here would be, most of the time is chestnut, but in this case, it's uh, keaki, which is another type of hardwood. It's very, very good wood. Uh, it's got a good resistance uh, to moisture and uh, water. So they use keaki here. And you notice that these keaki uh, packing, they call it, or uh, shims, are situated underneath hashiras or the pillars. And that's because there's so much weight of this house that is pushing down on this particular area that you want most of your support happening right here. Here's another unique technical aspect of this house that uh, you won't find in other carpentry places. Um, this is a very uh, custom joint. It was uh, designed by another carpentry company, but Fujimoto has since adopted it. The reason for this joint is it's very simple to cut. Uh, from the carpenter's viewpoint, to do the kizami, it's very quick. And you can see it's all straight cuts. Normally you would have what would be called an adi or a dovetail joint that would join these two together. But um, you'll often see that sometimes adis will break or bust uh, because of an earthquake or whatever reasoning. Um, but this is a, I, I feel that this is a more superior joint. And you can see here that this hoso actually slides all the way through and you can't really see it, but it goes all the way out to the other end and it's one solid piece. And that, that characteristic makes it very easy to cut. You of course have two komisens or two wooden pegs that are actually staggered and on a diagonal bias um, to keep these two pieces joined together. And this foundation assembly is made from hinoki. So it's a very, very good wood. Here's another technical aspect about this house, which um, is common throughout Japan. It's the anchoring system that they use for the foundation uh, structure. You can see here what's called a zabori um, nut. And you have, uh, I guess the whole thing is called a zabori, I guess, system or whatever. But this nut is very important for safety purposes just in case of an earthquake. So the architect will actually design and they'll actually do a structural calculation and analysis and they'll determine where to put these nuts throughout the house or these bolts. After they determine this, the carpenter has to be involved with, the, with this design because there's joints all throughout this foundation assembly that has to be uh, placed in strategic spots, A, because that's the length of the wood that we have, and also B, because you don't want this bolt to be right through one of the joints. So the carpenter will step in and talk with the architect as to where to put these bolts to make sure that we satisfy the regulation, but that we also uh, prevent any kind of problems when we do set up, the, uh, set up this foundation. Spacing by regulation between these two bolts has to be something less than two meters. So after they determine where these bolts would go, um, they would also tell the concrete person that's pouring the, the concrete where specifically to place these bolts. Because the concrete is never a perfect science or the perfect placement of these bolts, they're normally not really centered on this beam. So what happens is we have to do marks on the sides of these beams. We line it up against the bolt and we make a mark. And you can see the marks right here. We do a center mark and we make a mark on both sides of the bolt. And this indicates to us the angle in which that bolt is coming out of the concrete. And then we'll drill the hole. We also measure from this black line to the center of bolt. Carpenter likes to have these bolts situated on either side of a joint. 
And there's obviously a reason for that because you don't want the joint to be able to pop open or break in an earthquake. So they'll place these bolts uh, very close to a joint. One of my favorite parts of this house is, of course, it's the joinery. So I wanted to showcase one of the joints in this house, which is actually on an Ishaku body, which is a 300 millimeter tall um, beam. And you can see here, it's right above me. And this beam is so beautifully done. It's so tight. And also on top of that, you have a contrast in colors. You have a very red wood and you have a very white wood. You can see the, the joints so, so well. And what's nice about this particular joint, it's gonna be seen in the end. It's, it's gonna be visible at all times to the customer. It's gonna be great. This house also has two Daikoku Bashiras. Daikoku Bashira means the main pillars of the house. And this pillar actually spans through both stories plus the loft area. It goes all the way almost to the top of the house. Um, but you can see here, you have a joint that's connecting another 300 millimeter tall hari or a three, uh, ishaku body. And the joint here is, is so beautiful. There's another very unique joint that's built into this house. It was the first time to have ever cut it. It's obviously not probably a customary joint that you would find in a house, but hidden within this maruta is two ari shiguchis. One which is coming for the beam on this side that's sliding into this ma maruta or this circular beam. And you have another hari coming in from the other side and it's also connected by another ari shiguchi. You also see above it, you'll have a hozo that slides into the other beam. And that hozo is actually a solid piece built into the other hari. And that's what's joining these two together and making it one solid piece. One of the beams or one of the pillars of this house, and these are positioned on all four corners. And these are called Toshi Bashira. Toshi being, it spans from the first floor up through the second floor. This is a solid pillar and they're huge. I mean, these are 180 by 180 millimeters. They're very sturdy pillars. I'm standing below a very big window or doorway, sliding window door. And above my head is what's called a makura body. Makura meaning pillow, actually. And um, this is a, I guess it would become the framing for what will be an eventual sliding door that we place right here. This right here is the Nuki uh, setup for the first floor. And you can see how this Nuki is below this Nuki. But as you go up to the second floor, it changes. So now this Nuki is above this one. So it's a little bit of a different design as you work your way up. So I'm standing right here, right next to one of the windows or what's gonna be a placement of a future window. And this is something that I found very interesting. So the lead carpenter, Tatsuya-san, actually uh, designed the framing or what will become the eventual window. He built it into the structure, which obviously you have to do that normally, but you know, we cut this joiner right here. This is just an ob obiki joint, obiki joint, four of them. And then we slide this wood in and then they also cut this uh, groove right here, which um, allows, or eventually it's gonna have a, a sill here where the rainwater can run off, right? So this is all built and pre-designed so that it makes it easier for the eventual installation. But this is one of the interesting aspects of becoming a Japanese carpenter is you have to re uh, note these things. You have to get with the manufacturer of the, uh, the window and you have to know the size of this space or the size that you need to build for this space. And this forward thinking enables the person that's gonna be installing the window to do it very quickly because it's already set up. And this is perfectly 90 degrees. I mean, the guy doesn't have to do any kind of shims or anything. It's ready to go. It's crazy. So I'm up by the roof now and I'm standing next to the rafters or what's called taruki. And you'll notice that these ho this house, this particular house has very tall rafters. Uh, these ones are 54 millimeters, roughly, by 120 millimeters. And they're very, very beefy. And you're going to have insulation put inside this roof as well to keep, uh, during the wintertime, it'll help with the heat retention. I'm standing also next to the joint where the rafter will fit into. This joint is called a kuchiwaki. And it's an angled profile where the beam will slide right in but these are all pre-cut into the beam um, at the workshop. So the carpenter has to make marks and know exactly where these taruki are gonna go or these rafters are gonna go 
and then we have to carve each one of these joints. There's a lot of calculation that's involved in this part of the design of the house. And you have to know not only the height of where this beam is gonna end up, you also have to note the angle, you have to note the pitch, all of it. And you have to calculate that into this beam so that when you do put these rafters in place, everything lines up. And this is so beautifully done, you can see here that there's no gap. There's no gap in, in between where the rafter sits inside of the actual Kuchiwaki. It's beautiful, it's perfect. This is another Kanawatsugi joint. It came out so beautiful, no gap in it. Here's your Kanawasen sitting right here. Uh, you'll see that they'll tap these down and then they'll cut this Kanawasen and then they'll put the Turuki right above it. So you have to do a little bit of Kizami um, at the site, but it's not much. So that's it guys, thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is the, uh, the latest house build that we have just completed. It's one of the biggest house builds that the Fujimoto traditional carpenters have built to date. It's a two story plus a loft, plus two full bathrooms, a beautiful kitchen area. This house is gonna look magnificent once it's finally completed in the next couple of months. Thank you guys for watching, subscribe.